Hi, I'm Professor Yerby, and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Virtual PC 2007 from Microsoft. So let's go ahead and start by looking at some of the requirements on their website. Okay, so I'm at the Microsoft Download Center and I just did a search for Virtual PC 2007, select the language, and uh, uh, this, this software came out in 2007, but it's still the latest version, so uh, it's version 1, and it's not supported, officially supported for any uh, operating systems that came before uh, Windows 7, and some of the system requirements uh, that it it runs on any of these operating systems listed so we're looking at server 2003 uh, standard edition and 64-bit Vista business all the different versions of Vista and then we're looking at uh, Windows XP professional 64 and 32-bit and even the Windows XP tablet edition so these are the official supported operating systems. Some Linux distributions may work in Virtual PC 2007. I wouldn't recommend it unless you're just trying to see hey, what happens to work. Uh, what it is is Microsoft doesn't provide a lot of the drivers that you, you'll need uh, to, to work within this Virtual PC environment. It's, it's really a good way for you to uh, use some legacy operating systems that you may need for an application in your your organization or, or if you have some existing software that will only work with say a Windows XP machine but you've upgraded everything in your network to Windows 7 uh, then then this would be one of those situations where well this may be a good choice and so uh, all the other requirements are pretty similar to some of the other virtualization technologies that we've looked at. So the, it lists the, the different processors, so it'll work with AMD and Intel processors. Um, RAM, again, it's just the same as in um, most of the virtualization, or all of virtualization settings. The more the better, and so that you need to have enough to run your host operating system as well as your, your guest or your virtual machines. So, and here are the, the different uh, items that it runs on. The install instructions are pretty self-explanatory self once you download the file. And let me show you what, uh, so you would download the file, and, one second here, and you would get, uh, you would get this file here, just be a, an executable file, virtual PC go through, execute that, install it, uh, then what you would end up with is this, let me start this, so you would see the new virtual machine wizard, go ahead and click next, and you could give this a name, this one is not as smart as uh, some of the other technologies. So some of the other virtual machine managers, if you type in a name that's similar to an operating system, it will try to take a guess at what you're installing. So we're just calling this Windows XP. Let me just double check where I'm storing this at. So I'm storing this at this file location. If I wanted to store it somewhere else, I would select the other type. You can. Uh, store it as a VMC. Uh, if you want to use this in other virtual machine managers, uh, you'll have to do a conversion process. So it's it's not as friendly, I, I would say, as, as some of the other virtual machine uh, hypervisors. So just go through next, and this is where you can select the amount of memory, the disk size, and it looks like we can have a Sound Blaster or a, a audio card. Here are the different operating systems that are supported. Again, the the other, they're not supported, but if you had a version of Linux that you wanted to give a try, you could select other and then go through. 
I'm going to go through and select Windows XP for this for this tutorial and it's recommending only 128 megabytes of RAM that's really low I'm working on an older desktop so I don't have a ton available um, but I can probably do do at least one gig right and do is this an existing hard disk or a new one and I'll say it's a new one and I ask where you want to save this file so it's going to be a .vhd file and this is the location do that click finish and at this point we've done the majority of the creation of the virtual machine so we've set it up now we just need to go through we need to point it to our install media either a physical CD or a .iso uh, file so let's open virtual PC again okay so this is the console that will come up if I wanted to edit some of the settings in here before I start I could just go to settings and we can see all the options that we configured plus some additional options and so this is one we need to uh, look at so here we are okay and we could do some hardware virtualization and we could share some folders with our host OS or another virtual machine all right you can always display in full screen I, I tend not to do that because I want to be able to escape out of my virtual computer and know that, know that I'm not in that computer anymore so we can go ahead and do this and let's see we can click start and then what we're going to want to do is uh, we need to tell it that we want to capture an ISO image so we will go to our desktop find our ISO image so I'll do that now I'm not sure I did that before it started so what I might need to do is reset that's fine okay so I had to to pause the video there I had a few little minor issues trying to get my machine to boot but uh, what happened in my case is my VHD file which is where the data is actually stored is stored on a different drive that that was not responding a minute ago so I had to restart my computer so right now I have the settings I can see that I was in here I was trying to find the correct drive so I'm pointing to what is actually a Windows Server 2008 hard drive and so this is why it's really a good practice to to give your your virtual hard drives uh, meaningful names so I can see you know this is where it's at this is the name of the file but what I need to do if I start this right now is going to start an install of server that I've previously done so what I really want to do is go and browse to the correct file so it's on my F drive in this case and this is an old older drive that I don't have as much stuff on this drive nothing that I, I really count on except for this this hard um, this virtual machine I just haven't gotten around to to moving it around for some reason but so like that and it is this Windows XP hard disk so select this go ahead and click OK so now we selected the proper disk and we can go in there and we can look at the settings again so so that one I've actually configured with two gigs of RAM so when I run this one it it causes my host OS to to run a bit slow because I'm using pretty much half of my uh, total available RAM 
that we can go here and click start. Cool. And so now it's starting my, my install of Windows XP. Uh, again, I, I have several of these hard disks that I've, I've used at different times. So I have some dating back as far back as 2010 where I was uh, creating some of these. And I think I have some older ones on another drive. Um, but that's it. So following this video, I'll have some other information available, just general overview of Virtual PC 2007 from Microsoft. So uh, I hope this has been uh, enjoyable or helpful for you. And I'll let this boot up real quick just to show you that it actually works. Again, I've only got two gigs of RAM on this machine and my host machine only has four gigs total. So uh, everything is a little bit slower here. Okay, so it booted up and you can see that, so I have a, a Windows XP install. So what I've used this this for is to test out some, some software. So some operations management software that will only run in Windows XP uh, or some network simulations or a uh, thing to keep children safe online. So this thing's Hector's buddy. So I think I have that installed somewhere on here. It's just stuff that wouldn't run uh, in my host OS, but uh, it would run in Windows XP. So I wanted to test it or create some sort of training video or actually just use the software. Um, so once you're in the virtual machine, just like all the other virtual machines that we've looked at, uh, it works just like that. So. That's all, and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Thanks, and have a great day.